G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, we are continuing our series where we preview each individual BBL squad ahead of the Big Bash League, which kicks off on December 7th. We will be live streaming on the channel. I intend to cover the tournament as it uh, unfolds, and uh, as such, I've decided to do a uh, fair bunch of preview content for this tournament so we can acclimatize ourselves a little bit and we'll familiarize ourselves with the squads that are going to be taking part because there have been changes and I'm trying to come up with a concise way that people can consume it before the tournament starts. So up to this point, I have done the Melbourne Renegades, the Perth Scorchers, the Brisbane Heat, the Melbourne Stars, the Sydney Thunder, and today we're doing the Adelaide Strikers. If you want to find all that content, I have created a playlist on this channel uh, called Cricket 2324, uh, and you can find all those previews there. And while you're there, you might as well subscribe because we're going to be covering the BBL throughout this tournament. So the Adelaide Strikers, for context, finished seventh last year. They had five wins and they had nine losses. Well, in terms of their best performances, there was Chris Lynn with the bat and Matthew Short as well. In general, Matt Short as a all-round option was fantastic last year. Lynn averaged 41.6 at a strike rate of 141. So a very typical impact from Chris Lynn, as we can expect. Uh, and they also had a couple of bowlers in Wes Agar and Henry Thornton, I thought, really make a name for themselves. Well, really ever since they bowled out the Sydney Thunder for 15, which was unreal. In general, though, it kind of felt like there was a little bit too much left to too few, especially when Rashid Khan, who probably didn't have his usual impact, he still keeps the run rate down. Uh, he was unavailable at the back end of that tournament. And uh, if you've been following the BBL news up to this point, you know that Rashid Khan is not available at all for this tournament. So on that note, let's talk about the squads and I'll flash them up on the screen here again for you. They're relatively updated. Uh, but in terms of the new players, we've got Darcy Short joining from the Hobart Hurricanes after a patchy season last year. Brendan Doggett joins from the Sydney Thunder. James Basley from the Brisbane Heat. Jamie Overton is the England side as is David Payne, who played for the Scorchers last year with uh, with a degree of success. In terms of players that have left the squad, Peter Siddle uh, has joined the Melbourne Renegades. They also lost Harry Conway, Ryan Gibson, and Colin de Grandom. As I said as well, Rashid Khan, unfortunately, uh, despite getting retained with pick one of the BBL draft, he's pulled out because he has a, a back surgery that's going to rule him out for the entire tournament as well. Now, the Strikers do have uh, two absolute guns in Alex Carey and Travis Head, who would normally be big impact players in this upcoming tournament, but uh, they can probably expect not to see either, if any at all, um, in this particular year, because it's going to be test duties, of course, with the Pakistan series and now, the West Indies series is a little bit later than that. So I'm going to try and give you the best 11 that I possibly can muster from this particular squad. Uh, but I have left out those players in Alex Carrier and Travis Head because it's a little redundant. So I've got the Short brothers opening the batting. I know they're not actually brothers. Uh, Matthew Short and Darcy Short, which on talents and potential... I know Darcy Short didn't have a great season last year, but he is a big hitter. Uh, and Chris Lynn at the first drop. So there's a top three, uh, like I said, on talent... It stacks up very well. Then there's Adam Hose, James Basley, Jamie Overton, and Nielsen as their keeper, a keeper, rounding out the top seven. So probably two bowling options genuinely in that, in um, Overton and Darcy Short, perhaps. In the absence of Rashid Khan, Cameron Boyce probably becomes their chosen uh, spin bowling option, their frontliner. Uh, there's also Ben Menenti as well in reserve, but I went for Boyce. Uh, Wes Agar, Henry Thornton, and David Payne is actually a pretty good trio of seam bowlers there. I think it's a little bit underrated, to be honest. I think that that could be a very effective sort of, um, not pairing, there's three of them. How do you pair three people? But you know what I mean? I'd say that's a relative strength looking at this team. In depth, they've got uh, Tom Kelly as probably the next backup. Ben Menenti, as I mentioned, Jake Weatherall's there, and Brendan Doggett as well, who could probably find his way into the side. So to cover the general strengths of this squad, I'd say the top three, you know, is even with like Head and Carey out of this team, Lynn and the two shorts, I think uh, has top end potential. They could be really, really damaging. Again, like I said, Darcy Short is coming off a pretty average year last year. But uh, in terms of the spin options, it probably looks a little bit weak with Cameron Boyce, probably their, their number one go-to. Like I said, there's Menenti and maybe Darcy Short as well. If there's somebody else in this squad that is a spin bowling option, I'm unaware. I apologize. But uh, like I said, the other strength, it's probably, it's probably their top three and their bottom three because the last three in Agar, Thornton, and Payne, I think could be a very, very good bowling mix. So overall, how do I assess this squad? I, I kind of think that it probably lacks the depth to improve much. Compared to some of the other squads that I've run through in these doing these analyses, analyses uh, is that I think the batting depth doesn't really quite stack up against those other squads. I do think the bowling combo is there and we know that they can be dangerous. So look what happened to the Sydney Thunder a while back. But you can't help but feel for them as well, you know, like when they have a pick one retention bid on, um, on Rashid Khan, he's not even available. The hands were tied a little bit there. 
That being said, as I said before, he uh, didn't take a lot of wickets last year, but the economy rate and the building pressure on batsmen, I think, is something that they'll miss. So to offer an overall prediction of the Adelaide Strikers in this particular tournament, I think they are a genuine contender to come last, to be honest. Now, I will preface this by saying I'm not a cricket expert. I'm not a footy expert either, but I do know a lot more about footy than I do cricket. So I'm just having a crack here. The point of this video is to map out what their squad looks like. And uh, as always, I'll be open to your suggestions as well. But having done you know, a bit of work into this, I think the Adelaide Strikers have one of the weakest squads going into this tournament with some really good individuals. So little bits of this 11, I think are really good, but uh, they're gonna rely a little bit on luck to really compete this year. So bottom two is probably my prediction. But anyway, guys, that is my crack at previewing this particular team. As I said, I'm still getting a feel for all these teams and I can't wait for the BBL to actually kick off on December 7th. So I hope to have you guys with me. As I said, let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with and disagree with and what your prediction is for the strikers. And for now, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.